Well, this is a, a new area in neuroscience called network neuroscience, which deals with how brains are connected, how they're wired up, how they function as coherent, connected systems. And I think that's what we're talking about today and what most of my work is about. There's different aspects to it. One is anatomy, um, the connectivity of the brain in terms of the anatomical connections, the projections between different brain regions. Those are really important for different brain regions to communicate with each other. Um, most cognitive states, most behavioral functions that we perform depend on the activity of multiple brain regions operating together. And our work is directed at understanding how they do that, um, how the network of the brain coordinates activity and directs it at action and cognitive state. Those are some of the things that we're interested in. There's of course a large area of brain imaging uh, that's looking at the human brain in an empirical setting uh, scanning of brain activity and that's been used a lot to understand individual differences, uh, how people differ in terms of how their brain is structured and how it functions. And again, that's where we work on de devising measures for connectivity and networks that we can use to discriminate between individuals. Also, uh, in the context of clinical translational applications, brain disorders, mental disorders are caused or at least are associated with uh, changes in brain connectivity and brain networks and we are also very engaged in understanding um, those changes, how they occur, how they unfold in time and in the future hopefully how we can intervene uh, using networks as a tool to understand something about how we can uh, causally intervene to uh, make the brain better. It's a classic way of looking at the brain, uh, localization of function uh, has been and a strong current in brain science really for you know centuries almost uh, it's a very important aspect of, 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 of brain function I think there's nothing wrong with saying that different brain regions have different functional capacities or different specializations I think that's okay uh, I, I don't think we should think of function as being encapsulated in a single brain region though that's the part where I think it goes too far um, networks are a natural way of uh, combining, I think, um, the idea of specialization of function and then also distributed activity. Networks are, of course, distributed by nature, but then they don't uh, postulate that all regions are the same. That is not what networks are, are saying. Instead, brain regions have different status within a network. For example, some regions are more highly connected. They have more connections to other brain regions, more diverse connections. Uh, we call those brain regions hubs. They are, they are very central, they are very important. When they are impaired, uh, the network as a whole can fall apart, can disintegrate. Um, our network science approaches have allowed us to identify some of these candidate hub regions. They are specialized in a way uh, because they are centrally engaged in combining information from different sources. Um, they are more widely competent to contribute to different functions. Uh, so there, there is, there's functional specialization in that, and it comes out of the network framework. And so I don't think it's a bad idea, functional specialization. It's an idea, however, that should be put in context of networks as a whole and, and the contributions that individual regions, regions make as part of a network.